Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. Today we are going to discuss structure and life cycle of adiantum, which is also known as maiden hair fern. So first of all, we are going to look at the diagram of maiden hair fern, uh, which is also known as adiantum. It has a different uh, species and uh, it uh, usually grows on moist surface near water channels like rivers, canal, on the banks of rivers, canals, streams, lakes, etc. In the, uh, usually in the hilly areas, cold areas. This is a plant which is known as a sporophyte. This is the structure of a adiantum maiden hair fern. First of all, we will look at the stem of the adiantum which is usually underground and the stem of adiantum is known as rhizome such stem which is underground is known as rhizome this rhizome is brownish in color and contains scales on it small leaf like scales which are known as rementa from this rhizome which is underground stem arises roots like structure you can say roots because these roots are different from regular roots these roots are known as adventitian roots. Remember that such roots which arise from vegetative part of the plant like stem, branch, root, uh, stem, branch or leaf, usually most of the time branches, such roots are known as adventitious or adventitian roots. Usually the roots grow from radical of embryo present in the seed which is known as primary root or you can say tap root secondary roots tertiary roots but we are not discussing that root these are known as special roots which are adventitian roots these roots function as same process as general roots does because they absorb water and minerals from the soil from these uh, uh, from these underground stem which is known as rhizome arises leaf like structures which are known as fronds remember that the leaves of ferns are usually known as fern, uh, fronds fronds are such leaves which are huge size or with larger size and bear sporangia there are certain amount of sporangium which are attached on the surface of leaves that is why they are called fronds one more tech term we use for this group of plants is circinate vernation when the fronds is this is a front like leaf like structure of a adiantum whole this is whole one leaf and it is known as front when this front is young and immature it is coiled into a fiddle shaped structure which is a musical instrument as you can see in the green color this is a fiddle shaped structure this is actually young and immature leaf which is coiled so this condition is called circinate vernation. This is a special characteristics which belong to only this kind of plants like ferns or adiantum. When young leaves start to mature, it becomes straight and it becomes like this one. This is the main branch of the leaf or the frond which it is known as riches or main stem. This riches contain pinna and pinules if you look at this one this is a pinna and uh, the small leaves like structure are known as pinules so in this way many fronds are present on the stem of a single plant the other thing is that these pin uh, pinnas and pinules are green in color photosynthetic while their riches and main stems are black and shiny in color so when Ever you are standing on the side of a stream and you look around you will see like some maiden is sitting just beside the bank of a stream and her hairs are waving with the air so that is why because their riches and their main stem are black and shiny they looks like the waving hair of a maiden which is sitting just beside the stream so that is why would they call this fern are known as maiden hair fern. Now I'm going to take this pinules and enlarge it to, to see the details. So this is a main pinules, the major pinules which are present on the fronds. 
The special thing is that these pinules contain dichotomous venation. As we know that dichotomous venation is such venation in which a single branch divides, divides into two equal branches. So as you can see in this diagram, one branch divides into two, then other branch divides into two and this process continues. This, this is known as dichotomous venation. The second most important thing about this pinules is that their margins are bent. Their margins are bent little bit and form as false indusium. So I have made a diagram for you. So I have taken the margin of leaf from this area and enlarged it. So this is the structure of leaf which has been bent and this is known as false indusium. This false indusium contain a group of sporangia which is known as saurus. So all these pinules on their margins contain sori which is a plural of saurus. So many sori or group of sporangia are located on the margins of these pinules. So in this way many sori are present on all over the leaves of this plant. Now I am going to take one sporangium from this saurus and made a diagram for you. So this is the structure of a sporangium which I have taken from the saurus of false indusium. A single sporangium consists of a multicellular stalks which, with which it attaches with the indusium or leaf. The upper portion is wide and swollen. It has two portion. The upper portion is known as annulus, the margins of which are thin while the center is thick and the lower portion or one third of the lower portion is known as stomium. The upper three out of fourth part is annulus and the lower part is known as stomium. It has some radial walls and some vertical wall and the cells on the margins are very thin. The walls are very thin. This uh, sporangium contain a spore mother cell which is a deployed as you know that sporophyte is deployed. This cell which is a mother cell undergoes meiosis which is a reduction division and produces spores which are haploid. Once the spores are produced inside the sporangium, the sporangium get mature and with the help of sunshine, it breaks apart just in from the middle of the sporangium and it opens just like that. This is also a sporangium which has been opened as you can see in the top portion of the sporangium has been broken apart. This contain many sporangia, many spores sorry, which are haploid. These spores are released from the sporangium and dispersed by the air and drop nearby places which are usually wet near the water. Until here one generation has been completed which is known as sporophytic generation and it is deployed. When these spores fall on a wet soil they germinate into a new generation and this new generation looks like this. It is a hard shape and it is known as gametophyte generation because it is produced as a result of haploid spore. So this generation is also haploid, half number of chromosome. It grows, both of the generations, sporophytic and gametophyte generation, generations are autotrophic. They can synthesize their own food. This is usually hard shape. It has a notch on the upper portion, which is their growing point from there, which they can grow. It has rhizoid root like structure which are present on the lower surface which absorb minerals and water from the surface. The margins of the gametophyte, this gametophyte is known as prothallus. The margins of the prothallus or gametophyte are thin while it is thick in the middle just like a cushion. Just near the notch there is a structure which is known as archegonium which is a female reproductive part and just near the rhizoids on the lower surface of the uh, prothallus or gametophyte there are structure which is known as anthridia or anthridium which are male reproductive parts of this plant. The size of prothallus or gametophyte is usually 8 millimeter and how much 8 millimeter? Just the size of nail of your thumb. Uh, present on the surface of uh, wet soil start to grow when it becomes mature it produces male and female 
reproductive organs so i have taken out these organs outside of the plant body first of all i am going to discuss archegonium archegonium is a female reproductive part which has two parts the basal part is known as venter and the terminal portion is known as neck that basal part which is present at the base is usually embedded in the cushion like body of the prothallus while the venter which is a neck it is usually projected outside the body of the prothallus it produces a egg with the help of mitosis as you know that remember that whenever a plant body is haploid it will produce it is producing gametes then it will produce gametes by mitosis in the same way anthridia are present just near the rhizoid this is an anthridium anthridium also divides by mitosis and produces many sperms usually are known as antherozoids these antherozoids are also produced by mitosis they are haploid and they have spirally coiled and they have many cilia so that they can easily swim in the water when both antherozoids and egg become mature water of the water from rain or dew drops provide a surface for fertilization egg releases chemicals and with the help of chemotaxis sperms start to moving towards egg and after reaching from this area to this area they fertilize the egg after fertilization this egg has been converted into zygote which is a diploid structure with the fusion of sperm and egg and this all the process is taking place in the archegonium present near the notch of prothallus of gametophyte soon after formation of zygote zygote changes into embryo it divides mitotically and embryo then divides again into a new generation which is known as sporophytic generation just where the apical notch was present a leaf like structure produces and from there a root like structure also appears soon after these structure start to photosynthesize and start their own life the prothallus which is a gametophyte start to degenerate and it give rise to a new generation which is also known as sporophytic generation so in this way in adiantum or ferns there are two types of generation one generation is sporophyte sporo means spores phyte means plants such plants which produce spores with the help of meiosis while the second generation is known as gametophyte gameto mean gametes phyte mean plant such generation which produces gametes egg and sperms which are known as antherozoids so there is a alternation of generation in these plants sporophyte generation give rise to gametophyte generation and gametophyte generation give rise to sporophyte generation in this way this whole cycle or life cycle of adiantum has completed i hope you have understood it uh, see you in the next lecture until then bye